Uh, my name is Ritan Mitra. I work at North Carolina State University. Uh, my research focus is climate change communication. Cultural cognition has come out of Yale University and uh, Dan Kahan is one of the big proponents, but um, the theory in its nascent form was uh, there from the 1980s uh, uh, where Douglas and Wildowski first suggested that um, we think according to our cultures and um, our understanding is largely clouded by what our cultural worldviews are. And so there is this uh, two models, like one is cultural cognition and one is the knowledge deficit. Knowledge deficit is like um, we don't understand, uh, there's this consensus gap because uh, people don't understand the science. So yeah, so there is a balance somewhere and when we don't know exactly what the balance is like between culture and knowledge. Again, going back to the work of uh, Douglas and Wildowski, where um, they say that we can group people according to four end members, that is hierarchist, egalitarian, communitarian, and uh, individualistic. So um, depending on our, but very simply, it's more like you can group them as Democrats and Republicans. So there is a correlation, but it's not like one-to-one. -one. Um, so, uh, Cultural cognition is like saying Democrats will believe in climate change because that is where what their cultural worldview or political worldview, if you will, uh, that dictates them to believe in uh, climate change. And Republicans, on the other hand, will become more skeptic. But the interesting thing about cultural cognition is um, they say that if you give them more literacy, if you educate the Republicans, they will become even more skeptical. So that's the interesting bit. Um, and the reason for that is uh, people use a motivated cognition bias. So they're using their education to actually promote their cultural worldview rather than using it to get, be knowledgeable about the whole thing. Why would someone uh, use their political worldview to understand science? Um, that's because the entire uh, debate on climate change has been politically charged for a long time. So people, there is a partisanship uh, inbuilt into the whole debate. So uh, people normally tend to think in terms of a partisan kind of a uh, basis. Uh, they, they attribute a partisanship to the whole whole problem of a whole issue of climate change. So that is where it comes from. And it has been observed with a uh, few other topics like vaccines and uh, which have been politically charged or uh, by the media. Media has played a big role in this. Um, so over the years, it was not initially a very politically charged topic, but over the years, it became politically charged because there are two sides to two different views of the, of the debate. It's probably about anti-business. Um, it started from there. Also the religious part of it, and religion is also tied to conservatism. So there's this whole connection, and there are a few different feedbacks playing into the whole, whole debate. Framing does play a very important role. An entire body of research exists as to when you are talking to a particular group, like evangelicals, you would want to frame it in a particular context. Um, Catherine Hayhoe has uh, done a beautiful uh, job of doing that in that recent um, documentary which came out. So yeah, there has been some work on that as well, how to frame it properly for, for two different tiles. Some of your research has shown actually yours and uh, Lewandowski, uh, which shows that 97%, um, if you tell people that 97% of uh, climate scientists agree um, uh, with this uh, climate change is real, then people start believing more. So that itself shows that there is some aspect of knowledge playing into the um, a whole thing. Um, there is probably, it's not like we don't think according to our cultures. There is definitely a gap between uh, Republican and Democrats, and we all know that. Uh, but uh, the part which I'm not sure about is uh, if you educate people, do they really become more skeptical? Do they really use the 
uh, use their culture, uh, use the science to promote their culture. That part is uh, not well established. Knowledge depends on what you are measuring, what, what is knowledge to you. So if you're asking someone questions totally unrelated to understanding of climate change, then it's not supposed to show any correlation with risk perception. Kahan used a 22 item uh, set to measure literacy and uh, he found out that, well, there is no correlation, that knowledge actually is not helping. But then there are a few other studies, uh, like one by Stevenson et al. in uh, 2014, which shows that if you are uh, using climate change questions, then um, the, the relationship is there that with more literacy, uh, skepticism goes down. Um, but, and there are other studies as well. Uh, so it, it is dependent on uh, what you are measuring. Is it something related to climate or something totally um, numeracy or basic science which is not related to climate at all. It's not education which is polarizing. It's the type of education. That's the, the very big take home point. Um, so if you are um, looking at only educating someone with number skills, then that's not going to help. I think that's the biggest take home point. I would say a lot of systems thinking, um, uh, thinking of climate as a big connected system uh, where there are feedback loops, inefficiencies, and uh, the traditional way of doing science or math is like breaking down a big problem into smaller bits and then solving them independently. And it's kind of like those bits add up to the big, po uh, big problem. But systems thinking is uh, looking at uh, problems from a holistic point of view, and um, it's, uh, it's like two plus two adding to five. Um, so there are some inefficiencies in the system, and if you look at each discrete part, you will not be able to get the, get the answer correct. Communication and education should go hand in hand. It's not like the communicators are doing a really bad job of taking the science to the public. Well, we can improve, definitely. But there, is, there also has to be a somewhat kind of a receptive uh, frame of mind um, so that people understand what um, the scientists are talking about. I, I agree that the scientists can do a better job and the communicators can help them in doing that job. But um, if you don't have the right set of skills, if the public doesn't have the right set of skills to understand uh, that, okay, the climate, I the climate is a big connected system and there are a lot of fuzziness and we don't understand. There are uncertainties, but that doesn't mean we know nothing. So th these are concepts which the public should know to really grasp um, what's going on. Um, harping about, okay, the uncertainties are there and trying to, I think we have done a lot of progress with that. that and we still need to go do more, but we all also need to educate the public about what is uncertainty, how we look at the system. And if it, that is not there, then I don't think that only communication can help. Education has two different uh, uh, things. Um, so it's best to do it at the same time. Because if it's like, I think of it like, if you're not um, getting aware of something, it's like, a, it's a two body problem sort of like, okay, someone is, someone has a message and someone has to understand the message and you can, you can work on the message as much as you can. But if this person doesn't have that capacity to, both of them should work together. So I guess education will be working with this group and communication with the other group and then we can talk. Yeah, I don't know if there are, there's like this one thing we can do to address this problem. I think a lot of people agree with, that's a good thing, that's a good start. And there will always be a few skeptics. So one point of view which I um, somewhat subscribe to is, let's work with what we have. Let's work with the people who are uh, agreeing with, uh, uh, we are, who are getting that, okay, yeah, climate change is real. And there is a big number of people who actually think that 
you know, climate change is real and so, and there will be skeptics and we should keep working uh, on them, like, okay, giving them some education, trying to uh, uh, address their questions as much as we can, but let's not fixate on, on that. Let's move with what we have. There has been improvement over the years, not as much as we would expect, so the consensus gap is still there. Um, but there has been some progress and uh, my worry is if we focus too much on the skeptics, then we are not working with what we already have, some of the consensus we have and I guess that's a balance to strike. So some of our efforts should also be focused on, you know, how to move forward how to move forward from this, okay, whether it's happening or not happening. There is a big group of people who um, agree with uh, the climate change, um, uh, the big debate that, yeah, it's happening, it's real, and uh, scientists agree, and we are with you. So, yeah, I agree that uh, we need to work with them more and focus our energy more uh, on how to move forward and not get too bogged down with this smaller group of people and we should keep working on them but um, not focus our entire energy on that smaller group of people. So my area of research is uh, climate uh, change understanding communication that's the big area of research and uh, this particular problem there was this actually this paper by Dan Kahan got me interested into this whole topic and uh, I was like well that's a very interesting result that if you um, if you are educating people they're using their culture that education to promote their culture and that was very interesting to me so I started looking more into it and that's how I got involved also it's a very challenging problem and it's a very uh, relevant problem um, instead of working on something which is um, which is uh, scientifically relevant and but uh, this is a very present and real danger we are facing. So that kind of uh, motivated me into, into getting more into this, this question. Everything. <laughs> we have, to, we have uh, um, a big role to play. The choices we make every day, um, that is uh, definitely affecting uh, uh, future generations um, so we might not be able to see it uh, in our lifetime the choices we make how it's or we might be we are pretty close to that uh, stage but um, the, and th that is where again you know geoscience come into play because the concept of deep time how the choices we make today can have an effect like a, down like decades from today and how um, little bit of accumulation can lead to bigger accumulation in the future. So that again is um, making people aware that um, this kind of the system works in a slightly different way than you cannot point the remote to a TV and switch it on. It's not like as the feedback is not as quick. So there is a delay, there is a time gap. We have a big role to play and it's the best that we try and understand uh, how the system behaves.